I met in the uh, middle late 50s and uh, this is little Bill right here. My friend little Bill. Your friend little Bill. He has been my friend forever. As long as I can remember in the music biz. You know Bill, remember uh, when you and I got together, first of all, we, we met in junior high school, or middle school that they call it yeah, now, yeah. and it was called Jason Lee in Tacoma, Washington, and um, uh, we met, uh, in fact, at that theater. At the Sunset Theater. Sunset Theater on 6th Avenue in Tacoma, and it was the movie uh, Blackboard Jungle. Blackboard yeah. Jungle, remember that? And, the, and, the, and I think one of the reasons we went there at that time, first of all, it was close to our houses. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the first song, I remember, you know, if, wherever we heard any advertisement on it, always played uh, Bill Haley's uh, Rock, Around, Rock the Around, the Around the Clock. That was the opening song for that, for that particular movie. So that was a big, that was an exciting thing. I think that was the first time that I've heard rock and roll in a movie. Or rock it, music. It might the, have been the first time there was. For all I, for all I, I mean, they seemed after that there seemed a lot of they did these rock and roll movies, but that's the first time I remember hearing that kind of music as part of the soundtrack almost. You know? how, how old do you think we were? We were about 15 years well, old. I'm old. I'm older than you. So, so I, yeah, I thought I was around. I thought I was around 15 or 16. Well, then I was 14 years, years old. Really young. I was real young. I played a steel guitar. And uh, Bill played guitar. I tuned my bottom four strings on my little steel guitar down to play bass. Yeah. And uh, we had a, um, a drummer named Lassie and, and a sax player, uh, Frank Dutra. Frank Dutra. And we all got together. I mean, we met, Bill and I kind of looked at each other across the theater from each other that night that we uh, saw that movie, Blackboard Jungle. And we kind of looked at each other like, you play music, I play music, I want to meet you. Yeah. And that's how we met. Yeah. And uh, uh, that was, uh, boy, whenever that movie came out, I think that was about 55, don't yeah. you think? And then we, we decided to meet at my dad's garage. No, just a minute. We, no. First of all, you came over to my house I in did. my bedroom where I had my steel guitar right. no, and my amp. You and Frank came over. And we were just going to figure out whether we should get together or not. Mm -hmm. Well, we got together. We got together. And that's when we started practicing in the garage. Yeah. This was in '55, I think it was. Right. I, I'm sure it was. And then we and then we went to a a, a fair over in Puyallup, Washington, Buck and I, and uh, we saw this young young kid, and he was up on a on like a park bench. I thought he was giving a, a talk, but he was singing, and so we went up and looked at him, and he's got a bunch of people around him, he's singing, and uh, so we said to him, hey, we're starting a band, you want to be on our band? And he says, sure, you know, and so uh, we uh, we had him come and be on our band, and that was Rock and Robin Roberts. Yeah, uh, I thought he was singing, I thought he was giving a talk, too, because all those people were kind of you know, clapping and raising their hands and all that. Now, he was singing a, uh, a, um, a, a Little Richard Probably, song. Probably, yeah. And uh, we said, man, this kid... Uh, we want him. We want him. We said, you want to be in a rock and roll band? He goes, well, yeah. And he said, uh, he was kind of like a Buddy Holly lookalike, yeah. only a little more geeky. Yeah. And uh, bookworm kind of guy. But so smart. Anyway, yeah, but, yeah. Well, he was a smart guy. And, uh, but boy, you know, he didn't look like a rock and roll singer. But when he got on stage, was he a killer? Bill? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. this guy. He had a lot of energy. A lot of energy. A lot of energy. And uh, he could sing the heck out of any song. Any song that he had. And if he didn't know the words, he'd make them up right on the spot. You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> also the one that would kind of got us interested in um, in throwing our own dances which no one in Tacoma was doing there was no groups in town doing that 
we'd throw our own dances because Robin said you, we, we can make some money doing this and we'd rent these halls and then uh, put up posters and, and throw our own dances and uh, you know we started like the, the teen dances and garage rock I mean we practiced in Bill's garage and I remember the kids in the neighborhood. You remember yeah, the yeah, they, yeah, kids would come dancing. around, and and I mean we were all young guys. And I, I don't know what are some of the songs we did, Bill. What are, you know, you I remember? can't remember. I was trying to think of that. I go over. It. I, I suppose I, we, I know we did some original stuff, but I guess we were probably doing what we were here. We were probably doing some little richer things and Chuck Berry. I don't remember. But it was kind of rockabilly too at yeah, the time kind of because there was no definite. Here's the here's the rock and roll songs that you should do. Well, there we didn't was, really know. We weren't all that great of musicians because we were just young kids, and I think we just did the best we could with what we were hearing on the radio uh, at the time and and what we found. Like we went down to the record shop on Broadway and and heard those records. Yeah. Uh, and he, I had, I, wow, Buck, that was that was a great interview and. Hey, you know, Bill and I, uh, you know, the one thing about it is Bill's still performing today after this many years, and, I mean, the guy has a following. It's a phenomenal following. I mean, people just love this guy. And he does, you know, does his rock. He does his uh, standards now, you know. I mean, this guy is a, a trooper, you know, right. for that many years. The one thing that a lot of people don't know about Bill is, is that when he, early on, you know, he had a, he had a, a polio, you know, and uh, man, what a, uh, you know, and he made it through all that. He has a great family, you know, he has kids and all that kind right, of stuff. I've written some books. And yeah, he's written books. But anyway, you know, when we first started that band, you know, there was absolutely no places to play. No. We had to invent, you know, we had to invent, you know, uh, even our music, you know, how we played it and who we learned from. And, uh, you know, it, it, the one thing about the Northwest that I always thought was that, you know, the creative juices up here started to flow, you know, and, and, and other bands. I mean, we were the only band at the time, rock and roll band, or at least close to rock and roll, what we thought rock and roll was and at the time, you know, yeah. right before the Whalers, before the Ventures. And, uh, you know, we, like I said, you know, we went out and had a, in fine places to play. Right. It all came from there. So that's what the show's about. Uh, garage music, and we're a couple garage guys. We go all the way back. So, uh, well, back, you know, meaning that that's been our life. You know, yeah. it's been uh, everything, everything we've done. You know, and the one thing about it, I mean, from that early learning experience, that early days when we were making music, is that we're still inventing. Right. You know, still creating our own sounds, and I think a lot of people now are doing the same thing. They're recording in their in their garages, they're recording in their bedrooms, they're doing all that. So it's kind of back, you know, like, back to the beginning again, you know? Right. And, uh, Full circle. So, you know, I mean, that what a great experience, you know, when we were, we were young enough to have the experience of rock and roll coming into our lives, you know? Right. And uh, being able to use that as a tool, as an art, you know, and how you how you make the music and, and what you needed, you know, and the people you needed like songs, because most of the bands in the early days were instrumental bands. Yeah, where those were. Yeah. So uh, we want to invite you all back to, to our future shows because we're going to be meeting and talking with and interviewing people like the, the, the Ventures, the Sonics and others. So, uh, you know, Kent, just before we go, you know, I like the look. The look is good. The Godfather, the Garage Father. He's got the look, hey. you know. This is it. He, Kent Morrill, the Garage Father. Anything you need, I'll take care of it. <laughs> I'm making an offer that I won't even refuse. Okay. Hey, I need a new amp. <laughs> no. I got, I got Joey. Good at Joey. Get on it, Joey. <laughs> so, good night from the Garage Guys. Two Garage Guys. Thanks, Bobby.